Welcome back to uh, Realty Consultants, Property Management Talks, Investing and Investment Real Estate. Uh, I'm here with Brian. And uh, today we're going to chat about uh, some of the uh, things that uh, people will try to use to determine um, what, what identifies as a good property and a good uh, property for them to possibly look at purchasing. Um, um, you know, our viewers, Brian, uh, that are that are watching our stuff, uh, are consisting of uh, people thinking about investing, mm -hmm. uh, people that are currently investing and trying to get better at it, um, people that are um, um, you know real estate agents that are helping folks that are in both of those categories, and real estate agents that, to be honest with you, are trying to get into investing themselves and 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 helping. Uh, build their portfolio. So as the, that group of people is our audience, talk to us about um, a way that uh, can be f you know, fairly easy to determine if a property that they are identifying is a good you know, investing property. Because we yeah. can identify properties all day long that are great, that, that are in great neighborhoods, that, are, that have a lot of amenities, that just don't, aren't good rental properties and aren't good investment properties. Right. So walk us through kind of how you look at them and identify if it, if it fits through the formula of, of becoming a good property. Okay. So, well, first, of th first thing I'd like to say is uh, a mentor of mine told me one time, and this really shows that real estate is probably one of the best investments you could put your money into because as long as you have the time, time is key. As long as you have the time, it's going to make money. Yeah. It's going to go up in value. I'm not saying that all real estate always goes up in value because obviously that was debunked back in the mid to that mid to later 2000s. So, but that being said, if you have the time, history shows you're going to make money. So what that means is, is if you get into something and it's a quote unquote bad investment um, at that time, then you're going to make up for it as long as you can hold it. Yeah. Okay. I, I would, you know, kind of hard to break in, but you said that, the, that it was debunked that uh, things that were bought in the late 2000s, so let's call it the 2008 crash um, um, in real estate. If you bought real estate in 2007, 2008, at the height of this, and it went down in value, I would argue that if you just gave it some time, you're now looking at a, at a, at a real estate investment, while it may have been bad at that time, has more than made up for it if right. you've been able to hold on to it. Right, and that's why I've, I've always looked at um, real estate as a buy and hold. Um, nothing against flipping and rehabbing, and I do some of that as well. But really, real estate is a buy and hold investment. That's where you get the majority of your benefits out of it. Now, all that being said, um, what does this formula look, look like if I'm buying a property? So the first thing you need to focus on is what is the rent value? There are um, there are some apps out there. There are some... Uh, uh, places you can go to get um, current rent values. Um, uh, uh, Rentometer is one that we use. Um, it's very simple. You basically put the address, uh, the number of bedrooms, and then it'll give you kind of an idea in and around that area of what the um, market value rent is for that property. There's some other places you can go to your property manager. They'll tell you about what they can get for your property uh, that you'd like to rent. But that's kind of your basis when you're looking at purchasing this property is what does it rent for? Now you got to say, okay, this is what it rents for. Now you got to focus on your expenses. And your expenses are, if you're going to finance it, mortgage and interest. You have taxes, insurance, property management fees. You've got other things like HOA fees if you're in a condo or townhome situation. And then you've got things like maintenance that you just gotta assume you're gonna have maintenance over time. So what I do is I include that in my formula as well. Um, and then what you do is you, you, I look at it from a monthly perspective. If I can get this much rent in a month and then I've got these expenses and it spits out this much cash flow. Is that what I'm looking for? Um, you know, if it's if you're not really looking for cash flow, you're just looking for appreciation. 
You don't want it to be below zero because you don't want to be losing money unless it's going up in value a whole lot quicker than on a monthly basis. So you really want that to be zero anyway um, and then focus on the appreciation. Otherwise, you want that number to be kicking out some decent cash flow. Now understand there are expenses that are going to go away. When you get the loan paid off, then that's a big portion of your expense equation that's going to go away and then it's going to kick off more cash flow. Sure. So um, I've, I've, I've heard different rules of thumb and, and different numbers that are thrown out there. Um, Talk to me about this 1% deal. I've heard it, you know, it doesn't meet my 1%. Maybe it's 2%, you know, maybe it's a half a percent. What does that mean? And, 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 and the identification, does this, does this kind of, it, you know, meet the bare minimum threshold? Let's, let's, let's dive into the expense portion of it. Yeah, so um, in a vet investor realm, in investor mythology, there's always been this rule of thumb. If I can buy something that I'm going to get 1% of the purchase price value in monthly rent, meaning I buy a property for $100,000, it should rent for $1,000 a month. All that other stuff in the formula, you should be good to go. Um, and that's been, you talk to investors out there and that's, that's been one that's been around for a while. Um, there have been times you could get more than 1% during the downturn, like we talked about, yeah. we were seeing one and a half to 2%. Um, and that was just, in my opinion, beautiful. It's hard to find 1% now right. because you're seeing prices go up so fast versus the rents, but they're still out there. But if you can find that 1% mark, you can pretty much assume that it's going to be a good investment. And you're going to be able to take care of all those uh, expenses that you've determined. Correct. Awesome. So uh, we've identified a property. Um, it's met the, we'll call it the first line of, of rough going at the numbers, if it's going to make sense or not. Um, so the next, the next thing I, I'm concerned about as a real estate investor, and you talked about it, was the, the maintenance of um, you know, keeping in keeping in, in mind all the maintenance costs that you're going to have, those are day-to-day -day maintenance stuff. What we didn't talk about are the capital expenditures um, and 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 the big ticket items that we're going to have to plan for. You know, build in reserves and save from that monthly cash flow to be able to take care of those things. Um, so walk us through what some of those are, why they're important, why they can possibly, if you do some capital improvements, um, can raise your rents. Uh, let's kind of walk through that. Yeah. So, well, I, pu I put within my formula, I include those things as well in the maintenance, but yes. So there are things that long-term you're not going to pay for every month. Um, so it would be good to put a maintenance slush fund, let's call it, within your formula of figuring out uh, your cash flow because you need, to, you need to bank some of this rent cash to be able to cover things like appliances that break down, um, uh, HVAC issues, um, roofing issues. If you have siding uh, that needs to be maintained, you have siding issues that need to be done on a consistent basis, you know, within a within a time frame. So all these things, these are large, uh, large purchase items yeah. that one month's rent most likely is not going to pay for. So you need to put that money back. So when it does happen, it doesn't put you in a situation where, oh my gosh, what do I have to do? I need to get out of this property today. It's sinking me. That's what you hear from so many investors that don't get their stuff together. And then they're like, they're, they're screaming and yelling. And they're like, I got to get out of this thing. This is a terrible investment. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so preparing for those things up front will alleviate the heartache and the, the stress, the unneeded stress um, that, that comes from, 
you know, just lack of planning, let's just call it what it is. Right. Those that get super stressed about those things did not plan for them to start with. Um, so if you put build those capital expenditures um, in your plan to start with, it's gonna make life a lot less stressful. Um, so those are, you know, kind of getting things kind of maintaining. Those are capital expenditures that have to be done just to maintain the status quo within your property, mm -hmm. appliances, roofs, things of that nature. However, there are other type of capital expenditures. Those are um, looking down the road and looking at your property and saying, okay, I've got a, a average C property. Um, I'd like to, and it's, it's getting, let's just call it $800 a month rent. I really see other properties, if they're fixed up, I can get $1,200 to $1,400 a, rent, a month rent if I go do a certain things. For example, upgrading your kitchen to a, a, a higher quality um, uh, amenities, uh, bathrooms that are updated, flooring that is, is, is not you know, on the lower end. Um, those are big things that uh, uh, people need to keep in consideration when they're doing their capital expenditures. So you can actually make money and do the investment and get that money back in 12, 18, 24 months and increase rents if you, if you provide what the tenant's looking for. Yeah, those are more investments instead of sunk cost. So I look at the other things we were talking about as sunk cost. It is what it is. You got to have it. Um, you have to provide that uh, for someone. You're talking about more along the lines of kind of like if you were selling a house, here's some investments I would put into that to raise the value, whether it be rent or sell from that standpoint, and you're going to get more for it. And then that investment you put into it is going to pay off down the line. So exactly, if you're sitting on a house that's getting good rent and you've got good people in it, that it's just been performing really, really well over time, and you've been able to bank some of this, some of this cash in there, it would make sense to go in and do some of these things and put those in there because it's gonna come back to you. Awesome.